Hello guys, today we will talk about introduction to the operation theater and uh, I think that it's more interesting topic for you because uh, today you will understand how you need to come to the operation theater. Uh, the operation theater is a complex clinical environment where the care of the surgical patient is facilitated by the coordination and coexistence of many crucial factors. Depending on the healthcare facility that the operation theater is in the operation theater deals with broad spectrum of procedures, from the very simple to extraordinary complex. Multi-team, high technology operations in both plain and emergency situations in order to facilitate this. There is effectively an inner sanctum or immediate due operation team that includes the patient, surgeon, surgical assistant, anesthetist, nursing staff and theater technic. Uh, complex network outside the operation theater. Supporting the direct operation team, there is a complex network outside the operation theater, but essential to the conduct and successful completion of safe surgery. This network includes the central sterile and supply department, um, CSSD. The ward staff preparing the patient for surgery and caring for the patient post operatively. The suppliers of essential equipment, imaging resources, and pathology backup, as well as hospital administrators. Patient uh, uh, from the patient respective, um, there is a feeling of approach, avoidance, and benevolence. The broad element is the patients need to have their clinical problem rectified whilst the avoidance. Reflex the normal fear of the unknown, possible pain, complications and even mortality. This ambivalence over whether one should or should not process is based rationally on the perceived risks and benefits of the operation, but the influence of multiple emotional and experiential factors may be more powerful for many people. These aspects may be optimized by a current and expert assessment and professional behaviors by the preoperative team. From the surgical team's perspective, there is the opportunity to work together to rectify the surgical problem that the patient is suffering from. Spe specifically, for surgeons, there is opportunity to practice and employ the full array of skills that they have developed during their training, such as those described by the Royal Australian College of Surgeons RACS competitions. There you can see these competitions is uh, medical expertise, technical expertise, judgment, clinical decision making, health advocacy, communication, collaborations, management and leadership, scholar and teacher, professionalism and ethics. Anesthetist. From the anesthetist's point of view, there is the challenge of safely inducing, maintaining and awaken the patient from anesthesia by applying the pharmacophysiological knowledge and skills that they possess. Nursing staff are involved in both the anesthetic and surgical teams. They are specialist skills and training 
are vital to the smooth conduct of all operative procedures. The theater technical staff are crucial for safe patient transport position and ensuring that all appropriate equipment is available and safely functional for the plane procedure. All these groups must work together as a team, each bringing their unique skill set together in a coordinated, collaborative and respectful way to facilitate the patient's care. Appropriate and effective professional behavior is essential for creating and maintaining a functional team. Respect for each member of the theater teams is invaluable and the common courtesy of saying please and thank you is a powerful factor in enhancing respect and developing trust in each other. Despite this, emotions may run high under the pressure of surgery. This may lead to behaviors which may in turn be counterproductive rather than improving a tense situation. Appropriate training may help practitioners to adapt the challenge more effectively. The operation theater is an excellent venue for technique and training in all professional disciplines. It's important that students and junior staff have access to, the, to this environment to develop their to develop their understanding of surgery and anesthesia. However, there needs to be careful supervision in order to maintain patient safety. Ultimately, the safety of the patient is of paramount importance throughout any visit to the operation theater. Uh, in this lecture, we consider an overview of each component that contributes to the patient's journey in the operation theater under the broad headings of the operation theater and the direct patient care team, followed by the important role of the indirect support staff and systems to support care in the operation theater. Uh, operation theater or inner sanctum. Inner sanctum okay. The fundamental goal of the modern operation theater is the establishment of a safe and appropriate environment for effective and safe surgery. Surgery is potentially very dangerous. These dangers include excessive bleeding, damage to vital organs, failure to achieve the goals of the operation, poor wound healing, surgical site infection, or other infections. Of course, we know thromboembolism, fluid imbalance, and other concerns. Central concept uh, is the creation of a sterile field to provide the safest access to the part of the body to be operated upon in such a way that the risk of SSI is minimized. It must be the focus of all contributors to the inner sanctum that an appropriate sterile field is established, protected and maintained during any operative procedure. The creation and maintenance of a sterile field is discussed in this section, which also describes important factors relating to each member of the inner sanctum that enhance the chance of a satisfactory outcome from the plane surgery. Professional communication and the important issue of occupational safety for the theater group is are also covered. As a general point, it's ideal to have a separate preparation room 
for the scrap team to set up the instrument on stereo rollers and another separate room for the preparation of the patient for anesthesia. Patient preparation is essential to save surgery. There are many aspects to this. The first step is the establishment of the correct diagnosis or diagnostic possibilities and the choice of the correct operative strategy. During the process, a therapeutic relationship must be established between the surgeon and all the surgical team and the patient and the related. Special tests or preparations may be required to clarify the diagnosis and to further assess the condition. Once the surgical plan has been established, it is necessary that the patient understands the diagnosis and its implications, the risk and benefits of the plan procedure and alternative treatment including non-operative options. It's important that this information is conveyed in their usual language, with appropriate support available. This process is termed a tune informed consent. Consent must be clearly documented, both for legal reasons and to facilitate safe timeout procedures. In the elective situation, it's necessary that this consent is achieved prior to attendance at the operation theater. In truly urgent situation, consent may be waived if it's genuinely in the patient's best interest. However, it's always best that the patient and relativities understand that as much as possible. Even in an informed consult can be achieved by describing the plain procedure, its goals and expected outcome and embellishing it along the lines of the mnemonic SCAR. S is side effects, C complications, A alternatives and R risks. It's SCAR. Uh, a patient information brochure for the specific operation may be an invaluable aid to the consent process. This can help the patient and uh, their family to understand and discuss the forthcoming operative treatment. It may also be valuable in providing some standardization of the discussion pro process and in avoiding the omission of important information. Uh, look very uh, possible because um, this is very important for me uh, and for you. It will be your test. You need to create some brochure for patients with uh, some specific information what I will give you. Uh, this um, how you can do your brochure. Yeah, and there you see any steps and I want from you something like this, but another. Uh, type and maybe some more interesting how you will see it. Uh, planned elective procedures. For planned elective procedures, the patient's comorbidities should be identified and corrected as much as possible so that the patient's general condition is optimized prior to surgery. A simple example of this is cessation of smoking. Cessation of smoking. Ideally, for a minimum of four weeks prior to the operation, which has been shown to significantly reduce postoperative complications and may lead to the patient stopping smoking altogether. Another critical issue is management of antithrombotic and antiplatelet agents periodically. A target history is required to identify these and other health issues that may have an impact on the planned surgery and its contact.
careful synthesis of the operative candidate health and readiness for surgery can be amplified by appropriate investigations, especially in the older patient, more than 17 years, for example, such as urinalysis, full blood examination, ECG, electrolytes, chest x-ray, and so on. Subsequently, preoperative assessment may involve other specialists such as cardiologists, diabetic specialists, nephrologists, and our allied health colleagues. For example, physiotherapists to help with breathing exercises preoperatively. This concept of training the patient to be ready for elective surgery is becoming more popular, so-called prehabilitation. Prehabilitation. Rehabilitation that helps to prepare the patient both physically and mentally for the forthcoming operative procedure. Modern surgery frequently requires specific specialized equipment. Good planning and communication is essential in order that the right equipment is available in good working order for the right patient at the right time. This may be challenging to coordinate in busy operation suits where similar procedures are occurring simultaneously, placing conflicting demands on certain pieces of specialized equipment. Awareness of what is required for any particular operation and coordination of these lists are important for minimizing such conflicts. Certainty. There are certain key items common to all theaters such as operation lights, anesthetic mechanism, gas supplies, operation tables, suction, electrical cautery, and theater toilets. Specific items are required for specialty surgery, including simple items such as hand table for surgery of this region or a tunicate for many orthopedic limb operations through to more complex devices such as cardiopulmonary bypass mechanism for cardiac surgery, the ultrasonic surgical aspirator for hepatic and neurosurgical resections, and operation microscopes for the most delicate work. The value of experienced well-trained theater technicians cannot be underestimated in contribution to the care of the patient from the perspective of equipment provision. They also play a key role in transferring and positioning the patient for surgery. Patients may be placed in a variety of positions to facilitate their surgery. The theater techniques uh, knowledge of how to do this well is crucial for the welfare of both the patient and the operation team. Many patients are operated on in the su supine position. However, prone lateral and ligatory positions are required for certain surgeries. Wheel speci specialized head frames are required for intracranial procedures. Specialized operation tables and add-on components allow for patient positions to be achieved safely and even allow for changes or adjustment of position intraoperatively. There is a real expertise required to do this. The final responsibility of, for patients' positions remains with the surgeon, so careful overview of this aspect is required. One of the critical aspects of positioning is the avoidance of pressure and traction injuries. Certain pressure points need particular attention, such as the helps, the heels, uh, not helps, uh, the heels in the supine position or the condyles of the ankle in the lateral position. Uh, the ulnar nerve posterior to the medial epicondyl of the elbow is particularly vulnerable to pressure, which may result in a disabling tardy ulnar person. 
Likewise, pressure on the head of the fibula may damage the lateral peroneal nerve. In an increasing challenge in the domain is the management of morbidly obese patients who require surgery. Special equipment such as however such as a hover meds may be required to move these patients safely without risk to the theatre personnel, as well as a specially designed bariatric operation tables to safely cope with the loads involved. Modern, modern anesthesia is a beautiful blend of knowledge of human physiology and complex pharmacology and its interaction with the complex spectrum of pathology and the challenges created by the surgical procedure. Underlying these are essential principles of teamwork within the operation theater where the anesthetist is with us. Once again, excellent communication is fundamental in achieving exemplary teamwork during the patient's journey through the end. This commences with a thorough assessment of the patient's suitability for patient operations and the associated risks. This may be summarized in the Universal American Society of Anesthesiology, ASA. Scoring system. Flowing on from this is the concept of the patient's potential frailty, frailty as judged by their physiological status and whether the plain procedure may indeed be futile. The anesthetist can make significant contributions to the detailed discussion with the patient, their family, the surgical team and other interested parties about proceeding with surgery and how this may be done as safely as possible. Anesthetic care. Each operation theater will have an anesthetic machine with appropriate monitoring equipment and an anesthetic trolley with drugs and other equipment. Typically, expiratory carbon dioxide and tissue oxygen saturation are monitored as well as the ECG and normal observations. Drugs of addiction need to be managed specifically to meet legal requirements, so they are securely stored outside the actual operation theater. Another key role of the anesthetist intraoperatively is the administration of prophylactic medications such as antibiotics, thromboprophylaxis, as well as therapeutic agents such as heparin or blood products for cardiac and vascular surgeries. For the vast majority of operative procedures, a minimum of two surgical nurses are required. But a specially trained to work within the theater environment and must have an ex exceptional understanding of sterility and the process of establishing a sterile cell. The surgical or scrub nor scrubs, gowns, and gloves, according to the established standard, and is in charge of the instruments and disposable items that will be used for the planned operations. The scout or circulating nurse is also a trained scrub nurse who opens and provides all the equipment in a sterile fashion to the scrub nurse. The two nurses work as a team within the operation room and require quarantine time and space to do their essential work. as well as ensuring that all equipment and instruments are sterile and working for the post-common operation. The scout and scrub counting all instruments and the possible items before the operation and count out the same items as the operation concludes. It's important that 
interruptions be minimized during this process and this is one of the key safety checks of all operative procedures. Obviously, the numbers must match in all categories. An incorrect count at the conclusion of the operation warns the team that uh, an object from the scrap nurse original count may be still in the patient. This must necessary this must necessitate a recount and a search of the operation to fill and surround. If the count is still not correct, the patient must be either re-explored or imaged re uh, radiologically to exclude the possibility of a retained instrument or device before they leave the theatre. Once again, gut communication is the key to ensuring excellent patient safety. One of the benefits of this approach is a smooth and efficient exchange of instruments and equipment between the surgical team and the scrap nurse. For non-sharp instruments, if the surgeon is clear in his or her request of what is required next, then the scrap nurse should be able to place it in the correct way into the surgeon's hand without the surgeon having to look away from the operative field. Sharp instruments should not be placed hand to hand, but in an appropriate container such that the surgeon picks up the sharp item and after use returns into the container in order to minimize the risk of injuries. The surgeon is responsible for the decisions to operate and the pre-operative, operative and post-operative management of the patient. The requires many skills summarized by the nine regs compatiencies. Whilst many tasks are delegated to others. The surgeon is responsible for the overall outcome of the patients and must at all times be an advocate for the patient. Additionally, the surgeons and the anesthetists are the most highly trained members of the team. At close, the senior doctors are held accountable in wall or in part for all aspects of the operation. Therefore, the surgeon must act as leader of the cohesive operative team in partnership with the anesthetist. The surgeon, whether in training and being supervised by a more senior college or a specialist, Fully trained surgeon must be able to take charge of the operation team for the commencement and safe conduct of the operation. There are many ways and idiosyncrasies about how this may occur, which will reflect cultural and societal norms, as well as individual differences in style. In 21st century Australia, a collegiate and relative a democratic style is generally optimal in engaging all staff in the team. An important step in team engagement and a critical element in patient safety is preparative team timeout, TTO. This is how internationally recognized and under the banner of the World Health Organization checklist. This must be overseen by the operation surgeon at the simplest level. This aims to ensure that the correct part of the uh, correct pa uh, part of the correct patient is to undergo to correct operation at the high time. However, the process extends beyond this to encompass review of critical elements of patient assessment and the theater equipment. Anticipated critical elements are anticipated and discussed. 
uh, this is a safety checklist about what I talked in last slide. Uh, you can look it and that's all what you can do with this checklist. Video. All team members in the inner sanctum of the operation team must participate in the TTO. If any member has concerns, they must feel empowered to voice those concerns with the rest of the team before proceeding to start the operation. Ideally, in order to involve the patient in this crucial step, the TTO should be completed with the patient awake wherever possible. Surgical assisting can be one of the most challenging and yet one of the most rewarding activities for medical students, surgical experts and trainers. It is also part of the role for senior surgeons mentoring trainees during their training. It is an art of sorts and requires undivided attention to the operation as well as mindset of what can I do to make this operation as straightforward as possible for the operation surgeon. If the assistant is new to theater or has not seen the operation before, this can be very difficult, especially if the procedure is not going well. Uh, timely appropriate question can help assistant to be a most rewarding educational experience. Retraction may be a challenge task for the inexperienced assistant. The goal is to display the anatomy in the best possible way for the surgeon. It's best to maintain the retractor position to the best of one's ability until it is adjusted by the surgeon. Remember that excessive force may cause trauma to, to the tissues of the patient. It's important to follow the operation as the required retractions does change as the operation evolves and, of course, will ultimately be dispensed with as the operation concludes. Other assisting activities such as cutting sutures and deploying electrical re and suction should be done at the direction of the operation surgeon. In general, the section scissors are not used to cut sutures. It's important to develop the habit of cutting with the tips of the scissors to reduce the risk of cutting a little structure deep to the suture. Electrocardiogram uh, involves closure of bleeding points by heart from an electrical current. Monopolar diathermy involves the flow of current from the instrument to the surrounding tissue, then back to the machine via a return plate. Typically, the surgeon will grasp the bleeding point with the tips of a forceps and will ask the assistant to touch the monopolar probe to the forceps and activate the current via a switch. Generally, this contact is best made high on the surgeon's instrument, avoiding the surgeon's line of sight. It's important to listen carefully about when to stop in order to prevent charging of the tissues. Um, Bipolar diathermy involves the electrical current flowing between the tips of special forceps applied to the bleeding point by the surgeon. The assistant may be asked to activate the circuit via a pedal and may be required to keep the tips 
moist by applications for a small volume of fluid. The goal is to apply enough fluid to allow boiling at the tips of the forceps, avoiding cheering of fluiding by under or over application. Suction must be done carefully, as exercise suction may traumatize the tissue and cause bleeding or damage to a vital structure. Start gently and listen to the introductions provided. The assistant must avoid blocking the light illumination, the surgical field, or obscuring the surgeon's line of sight to the operative field at all times. It is essential to avoid breaking sterility at any time. Hands should be kept above the waist and below the shoulders, out in front all at all times, while avoiding contact with the anything non-sterile. If the occurs accidentally, the person responsible should immediately own up and avoid touching the sterile field until the loss of loss of sterility can be rectified. For pilot, as one gains more experience, better and Anticipations and initiative develop. Opportunities to become more surgical readily present themselves to those who continue to show interest in the safe conduct of operative procedures. Preparations of one skills at workshops and practice of this at quiet time are important in reading oneself for opportunities that may arise to take an important role in surgery. Another important role of the more experienced assistant is that of the co-pilot, supporting and backing up the primary surgeon. Clearly the work that goes on in the operation suit is central to the care of the surgical patient. Therefore, it's essential that students attend to operation suit to witness a range of surgeries. This is also an excellent environment to learn about sterile practice. There are changes in achieving access readily. There is a relationship between the number of personnel in an operation room and infection rates. Therefore, many theaters will limit the number of observers, however, the most surgical units perform many surgeries per week, so there are always opportunities to observe. In order to gain a patient-centered understanding of surgery, it's essential that the student understands the patient's illness and indications for surgery before attending. It's necessary to read the notes and to meet the patient preparatively. A proper history and examination should be performed. Medical students just be mindful of the nursing and other staff needing to prepare the patient and also to be respectful of the patient and their anxiety about the forthcoming procedure. In the operation theater, it's necessary to introduce oneself to the surgical team and request permission to observe the procedure. A balance needs to be found between being involved as closely as possible, whilst not interfering with the safe and efficient conduct of the procedure. Respect for all the sterility and safety of the procedure is paramount at all times. It is wise to be prepared to present the patient's clinical details
to one senior college if requested. The creation and maintenance of a sterile zone for the operation is a fundamental tenet of modern surgery as previously noted. This se section covers preoperative preparation, surgical scrubbing, bowing and gloving, skin preparation, draping and protection of the sterile field. These principles apply to all types of foam, but may need to be adapted to the particular circumstance. In some surgical procedures, the patient's skin flora are a major cause of SSI. The skin cannot be completely sterilized because of the complex and natural structures, sweat glands, hair follicles, and other. Uh, the complex microbiome that inhabits the skin. Normal commensals include potential weak pathogens such as a propionibacterium, corinobacterium and staphylococcus epidermis. Willest colonization with staphylococcus aureus may occur in up to 25% of normal individuals. Can Colonization with multiplicerous pathogens is complete is common in hospitalized patients, especially when they are sick. Receiving antibiotics or have discussed of ulceration of the skin. Therefore, it is necessary to achieve the maximum possible reduction in the burden of pathogenic skin flora in the immediate preoperative period. The mission the patient may be asked to use an appropriate skin decontaminate before coming to the operation theater. The patient's operative area must not be shared before arriving in theater. As this deep practice has been proven to increase the risk of postoperative infection. In many forms of surgery, preoperative courage of Staphylococcus aureus in the nose, growing or other area is a common risk factor for SSA. In many services, screening for the patients. Pathogen is undertaken and clearance programs institute preoperatively for the colonist patients. In surgery of large bowel, a major cause of postoperative SSI is related to contamination from the bowel flora. Preparation of the bowel with strong osmotic appearance may reduce infection rates. Sometimes for uh, sometimes, for certain common procedures, uh, a so-called bundle of care is indicated as a protocol driving way of minimizing SSI by commencing preparative risk reduction strategies and continued appropriate strategies through the operation and into the postoperative period. Once intravenous access has been achieved by the anesthetist, appropriate antibiotic prophylaxis is administered up uh, as per guidelines. It has been demonstrated that it is optional that this be given at least 30 minutes before skin incision so that uh, adequate antibiotic levels are achieved at the mountain. Staff may carry pathogens picked up from other patients for from the hospital environment, including some with high levels of antibiotic resistance. It is important that appropriate clean the theater a trial be done by all staff before entering the operation suit, and uh, that these be changed when they return to the theater from as the environment. It's important that hand hygiene performed before 
entering and leaving the evidence in video theater and whenever contamination might occur. Uh, the operation theater must be an extremely clean environment with appropriate surface that provide a high level of clean lines and specific clinical protocols to ensure that this is maintained. The room must be large enough to accommodate all the personal and equipment and to allow significant space to create an ideal sterile file. Modern standards dictate that the airflow is controlled and specifically fit uh, to high standard to minimize bacterial contamination by this road. In theater, the surgeon has a choice between four common skin preparation solutions as well as some less common alternatives. The principal options are across preparations of chlorhexidine or iodine, uh, or solution of each of these agents in alcohol. All these options achieve substantial reduction in bacterial counts on the trade skin surface. Studies demonstrate a greater effect on pathogenic spread size then the normal mm, page, page typing this demonstrated that organisms present on the skin preparatively are commonly the cause of postoperative infection. There is theoretical benefits to chlorgexidine over iodine, as chlorgexidine is still bactericidal in the dry state. Iodine based preparations are not longer active once the dry. Iodine is also inactivated by blood, by blood uh, whereas chlorhexidine is not. There are time constraints involved in the bactericidal effects of these preparations, typically, at least 5 minutes of contact with the waste solution. is required. Some authorities advise preparation for as long as 20 minutes for equinox preparation, but this is often deemed to be impractical. Uh, all surgical staff need to perform a surgical scrub before growing and glowing for the procedure. The process as a skin to the skin preparation of the patient, each operation, the appropriate antiseptic must then be applied to these regions for the correct time period. Common antiseptics are chlorhexidine 4% or polydon iode 10% delayed in tap water. Generally, the first scrub should be for 5 minutes with 3 minutes scrubs for subsequent cases, unless significant contamination has occurred. Alcohol based scrub solution achieves a lower bacterial count than, than water based solution in shorter time periods and are therefore preference 90 seconds is an acceptable acceptable scrub time for these agents. Meticulous technique and practice are required to effectively attill the close technique. Double glowing is widely recommended to reduce the risk of bacterial contamination from the hands of the staff through microbes or tears in the gloves. The practice also reduces the risk and severity of needle stick injuries to staff members. After adequate skin preparation of a wider zone than the anticipated operative field, surgical drapes are applied to define the operative component of the sterile field and to cover 
the surrounding area. Sometimes these are extensive enough to exploit the non-sterile part of the operation theater. The drapes are performing a true barrier function, so they need to be resistant to fluid strike through and be robust enough to not tear usually but also flexible enough to confirm the idiosyncrasies of the human body. Once the sterile field is established, it should not be left unattended. Scrub staff should stay close to the sterile field and movements by non-scrub staff kept to a minimum while surgery is in progress. This includes traffic in and out of the theater. There should be an address of respect to the patient that the sterile zone created for the operative treatment is in sacrosanct zone. Indeed, it's important that any branch of the sterile zone is dealt with any rectified immediately. With the establishment of the sterile field for the anesthetic patient and with all these essential staff and equipment ready, the operation can commence every member of the team confirms that they are ready to go and the scalpel is placed to the surgeon in the appropriate way. During the operation, noise should be kept to a low level as clear communication within the surgical teams is key to safe surgery. The surgical teams must be focused on the task at hand. Some surgeons use background music to enhance their ambience to of the theater and optimize their performance, but there is a risk that this may act as a distraction or inhibit good communication. It is essential that everyone in an operation theater is aware of the potential occupant hazards and aspires to minimize their impact. The most Concerning hazard is the potential for exposure to body life fluids, especially blood with the resultant risk of blood-borne infection. The potential risk includes contracting or various forms of viral hepatitis or HIV or AIDS. The prevention to penetration injuries by, by careful attention to safe handling practices or sharp instruments is fundamental to reducing this risk of transmission. Personal protective equipment such as appropriate uh, eyewear, gowns, gloves and masks are of considerable benefit. There are also potential risks from X-ray radiation during interoperative radiography, which must be prevented by the use of protective lead clothing and lead sheltering. Lasers may cause eye damage, so specific precautions are required when this technology is employed. The common cause of workplace injuries in the operation suit are the physical forces involved in the handling of the unconscious patient. Injuries to the lumbar and cervical spine may result. It's important that there is proper planning and personal resourcing for patient movement and positioning. For people are typically required for the physical work of rolling a patient to the prone position as well as two people to handle the head and the feet respectively and the anesthetist must also be free to manage the airway during patient movement. Uh, that's all. This part of lecture is ending. And uh, please subscribe to me on Instagram and look at us. Um,
publications and many likes yeah comments and see you later thank you very much bye bye good luck <laughs>